Hillside with Joe Messina. I'm your guest host, Kimberly Marin. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and more. Check it out on therealside.com. You can also join the conversation on Facebook, unless you're Greg, and comment on what's being said on the air. I am joined by editor of GraniteRock.com, one of the top ten online websites for politics in New Hampshire, Steve McDonald. Um, Steve, hey welcome again, and thank you for joining me. Well, thanks for having me. So, I know, and just to let everyone know, I'm, I've asked Steve to be on for the next segment um, so we can talk dish about uh, the elections and other things like that. Um, but I wanted to focus on the media this time because elections are coming up, and they absolutely affect elections. So that's, there's a method to my madness, everyone, I promise, although I might not always know what it is. Um, so now what are you seeing, um, for media with all of this, you know, Twitter shutting people down, Facebook shutting people down? Are you seeing a shift or less conservative media being, um, posted now? I don't spend a lot of time on Twitter, so that that's probably not a, a fair question in that regard. Um, on Facebook, most of the people I associate with are folks who are coming to me directly for mm-hmm. content, coming to Granite Rock specifically for content. Most of the stuff that we share in that space is in right-leaning pages, so a lot of that is there. But, you know, if you go out and you read new media elsewhere, there is a lot of talk. Uh, we certainly all know people who've been shadow banned, and mm-hmm. uh, or at least suspect that they have. Um, you've been put in Facebook jail more times than I can count, I think. And so <laughs> there's always going to be this and that perception's out there and it's become part of the culture on the right we are well aware of the bias and it just again it's like this thing where republicans just kind of assume that's the way the environment was well we kind of accept that but that doesn't stop us from working our way around it we we try to reach right. out to the people which is a, one, another one of the reasons we go to events because there's lots of people out there who really haven't even ever heard of granitrock.com or they don't know that they have a local conservative or a libertarian outlet where they can go and there's people who kind of think like they do writing about things that interest them and how they can use that information to interact with the politicians and the bureaucrats and the people in their town government uh, to help improve their daily lives. So there, uh, and, and that's at every level. You, you find that, that built in bias at the town level, you, you find it, at the county level, you find it at the state level, and you certainly find it in the bureaucracy. So it's everywhere. It's it's like you're swimming in it constantly, and you're just looking right. for a, a little refuge where you can go, oh, I'm not crazy. People really do think individual liberty and personal responsibility is a thing, and that's something we should try to embrace and, and advance. You know, I re- that's funny you said that, because I remember after the Women's March, which I covered in, right here in Concord, and all its ridiculous glory um and i wrote about it and i I had women say thank you you're that's exactly what i think these women are out of their minds they're an embarrassment like people i never even you know talked to before whatever saying things about it because someone posted what they were thinking but maybe just didn't have a place to share it out with other people you know and i think that that serves a huge purpose um, for a lot of people that, you know, Granite Rock provides that ability where you have writers who say what a lot of people are thinking, but just don't have the same outlet to share it. It's like so being at an AA meeting. You, you, you're, you stand up and you're like, hey, I'm Steve. I'm a conservative Christian, white, male, Republican, blah, blah, blah. You know, they, they need affirmation. They need to understand that you're there, you're like them, and that you're going to speak out about things that are important to them. And, hey, come join the conversation. You know, help us out. Let's talk it through. We're not going to agree on everything. Maybe we're going to find yep. a different angle. But together, we're going to come up with some, some ideas about what's going on and, and, and how we can share our thoughts with people who are making policy decisions. Right. And that's one, that's one of the super important things is keeping an eye on your local government. And that, that applies to every single state, um, which is one of the reasons why I, had, I wanted you to come on, because what we're doing in New Hampshire should be and probably is being, hopefully is being done in every single state where there is someone that that can speak up and fight against 
um, the ridiculousness of the left or fight against the corruption if, of, of anyone, whether they're right or left. It doesn't matter what party they're in. Um, but, you know, and alert people about ridiculous legislation. Um, every state should have that uh, because it's so important. And that's one of the things that Granite Crack does as, as well, correct? Well, oh, yeah. People and, about and legislation. Absolutely. Uh, you know, there's a lot of groups in New Hampshire that do a lot of different things. We try to grab little pieces from all of them. And, you know, I'm in the process of, of really trying to build up a, a, a larger bank of regular contributors, people who maybe contribute once or twice a week or, or once a week. You need, you know, you need more of those people. So uh, sometimes you'll get somebody from the school choice uh, group or you'll get somebody from guns and you'll get somebody from life and you'll get, you know, so you try to get all those people in and that they're all tuned in to those issues and those those pieces of legislation so they've got you know all the different you know we have a thousand bills every year in new hampshire so every session sorry that's you know and uh, mm -hmm. and, and so there's way too much for any one or two or a dozen people to really be paying attention to so it's nice to have these groups and have them all kind of work together and say hey did you see this because you probably didn't it, there's just no way especially since i mean we're not even paid for this so there's no way we're going to spend all our time sifting through legislation but if you've got somebody who's, who's attuned to that and you're connected to them and you're connected to them right. through media or new media uh, you can grab that piece of information you can write a quick post about it or share theirs if they've written one and uh, share it someplace like graniterock.com, which has a little bit more reach, and then people begin to see it, and you can start pushing it out into social media, and people begin to say, oh, wait a second, what is this? You know, we've done that with – we do that every year with dozens and dozens of bills that that are pressure points that, that really think – things that are going to take us in a direction we really don't want to go. Family medical leave right. is a good example. Marcy's law is a good example. Just about Ugh, every yeah. single gun bill written by a Democrat is a good example. Uh, there's tax <laughs> bills. Um, you know, you pick a policy and there's going to be a piece of legislation every single year that's just like the garbage legislation from last year. And you have to go out there and you have to make that case every single session that this bill has to die again. Right. And it's and it's the same typically. And I just already noticed this from something this session again. It's the same legislation. They don't even bother changing it. They just keep shove, trying to shove it back through, even though it failed multiple times before. It is persistent. And, and that's just, yep. you know, if you think about the way the left operates, they've been pushing the culture and pushing the culture and pushing the culture. And everybody a few years ago was thinking, oh, that's absurd. But now everybody's like, well, that's the norm. So you, that's why you have to fight every single one of these lousy bills, because you know if you stop applying pressure, they're going to advance it. And so you right. need new media. You need people who are interested in doing this, whether it's as a hobby or as a, you know, a armchair lobbyist or whatever you want to call these folks, to get out there and share information with these other groups and talk to people who are involved so that everybody can start to work and then use – the other tools you have available, write letters to the editor, make phone calls to politicians, get people to, to do some phone banking with enough legislators that you think you can tip the bill in the right direction. You just have to do it. I mean, if you're a state right. the size of New Hampshire, it's pretty easy. Um, when you get into a larger state, you're talking about working maybe just on the county level and coordinating. It, 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 I can't even imagine how hard it would be. I know. Uh, to work in a much bigger state, I don't. I don't know what everybody's legislature is. Our house has 400 seats in it, so uh, that's a lot of people. And well, know, other legislatures a are super small compared to ours, but they're also paid, and it's like a career, and they just become the hacks, just like in DC. So they don't care about the people. So that's you know, it's a little yeah. bit different. Lobbyists, lobbyists, lobbyists. Well, yep, we have those too, but. Um, I guess those people will never go away. Some of them are good, I guess. <laughs> well, they won't Some because won't. as long as you're going to so be good. applying, as long as you're going to be applying regulatory pressure and taxing people, and they're going to want to have a voice that's sitting in the gallery listening to politicians or taking them to lunch or doing whatever it is lobbyists do in yep. New Hampshire or anywhere else, and and trying to get their agenda advanced or their taxes cut or their policies preferred and. Um, you know, that it is never going to go away. I mean, obviously, the best way to, to simplify it is to take as much money and power and move it down to the state level as possible. That way, the lobbyists in D.C. don't have anything to do. they got to come here. Right. No, exactly. 
Um, so, you know, do me a favor. We're going to be switching over to the next hour shortly. W- tell people where they can find you um, on uh, uh, at the website, Facebook, Twitter, everything. Okay, granitegrok.com, G-R-A-N-I-T-E-G-R-O-K, one word, dot com. If you are on Facebook, just search Granite Rock. If you are on Twitter, just search Granite Rock. Um, <laughs> those are the best ways to get a hold of us. And if you want to reach out to me directly, my email is steve at granitegrok.com. And we will be here on the other side of the hour. We're still going to be talking with Steve McDonald from GraniteRock.com. But we're going to be talking about elections and other uh, some current events that are going on. We'll be right back. Go to the website. Check out the stations and times. And don't go away and join us on the other side. <laughs> 